purpose of la or lam or whatever you want to call it. So the lam is pronounced in two ways. If the lam has a fatha or a dhamma, a a or a u on top of it, then it will be pronounced with a full mouth. Like if you had Allah, you don't say Allah. You say Allah, like a round face. If you look at my book, I've got a round, a picture of a round face there. Can you see that? So if it was, um, say, in Allah, see, there's a fatah there. Um, now let's see where there's a dhamma. Rasulullah. So it's like a round face and it's a full mouth. You try that with me. Allah. In Allah. Rasulullah. See, you fill your mouth. But where there's a kasra, then you have a smiley face. Bismillah. Can you say that? Bismillah. Balillah. Wherever there's a kasra, a smiley face. And it's quite easy to remember because remember the kasra is down. Your mouth is down with a smile. Okay? But when it's something up, go up. Allah. Okay? A round face. Are you good with that? So it's really, really simple. So let's see if you can try and say, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Wallahu. Can you say that? Okay, now say Bismillah again. Bismillah. Can you see how easy it is? Okay, so that's one of the rules that we need to remember because very often people forget um, and it's really important to know these rules. Right, the surah that we're going to recite today is Surah to Shams. Okay, now Surah to Shams is Surah number 91 and it means the sun. Um, you can imagine the nine planets um, revolving around the one sun, so you know it's surah number 91. In essence, if I'm looking at the focus of the surah, it says that the human being, our soul, is programmed to win. It's really programmed to win. And it says the way it wins, it's through purifying it. You will see Allah says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا sawaha, The soul and that which is perfect. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا He said we've inspired it. That means the soul has inside it. It has a choice. Either to be pure, to be good, or to be destructive. And he says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا You will succeed if you purify it. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَا But if you don't, if you corrupt it, you will not be pure. So failure is a result of corruption. And Allah gives an example of the people of Thamud. Now we talked about them, so you know the people of Thamud. Did you know that Surah Shams is recited in the second rakat of Eid Salah? Because it tells us how to reach our personal best, how to be the best. It's really important we understand it. So now it starts off with seven oaths. You know, we talked about oaths where Allah swears. Not because he wants to prove that he's right, because he's truth anyway. But he swears for us to see the importance of what he's swearing by. So there's seven oaths. Six of them deal with the sun. He talks about the brightness of the sun, the moon that follows it, the day that reveals the sun, that night that hides it, the sky that holds it, the heavens and the earth. And then he says, And the perfection of the soul. So... In essence, the surah is saying, you and I, when it says, فَأَلْحَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا means we have a choice. We can choose between good and evil. And it talks about the people of Thamud, like I mentioned, who rejected what Prophet Salih was telling them. Remember, they were arrogant, they were wasteful. All these things cause corruption. So let's recite the surah. Have you got your Qur'ans with you? Yeah? All right, let's recite it then. Come on. Oh, let me remember first thing. The benefits of reciting the surah. Oh my God, I love these. Okay, so if you recite the surah, then you become stronger. Courage, you become popular. Um, Allah increases your sustenance. And one who recites Shams, Layl, Duha, and Inshira will find that all creation on the Day of Judgment will say, this person is right. So a good surah to remember. Remember, we're going to recite it in our Eid Salah as well. You ready? Okay. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa shamsi wa ruhaha. Wa al qamari da talaha. Wa al nahari da jallaha. Wa al layli da yagshaha. والسماء وما بناها 
والعرض وما تهاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذب الثمود بتغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فأقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف أقباها صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين Okay, we're going to go to our du'as now. You ready? Have you got your du'a book ready? Let's start with Ya Aliyu Ya Adim. Can you recite with me, please? Okay, let's start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Ya Aliyu Ya Adim. Ya Ghafuru Ya Rahim. Anta Rabbul Azim. Alladhi laysa kamithlihi shayk. وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر أذمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت سيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شر فيا ذا المن ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار في من تمن علي وادخلني الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Please recite with me loudly. I can't hear you. I need to hear you from my soul. So recite with me really loudly, okay? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma adkhil ala ahli al-kubur al-surur. Allahumma aghni kulla faqeer. Allahumma ashbi' kulla jai. اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دين كل مدين اللهم فرجا كل مقروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل عسير اللهم اصلح كل فاسد من امور المسلمين اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن عالك اللهم اقضينا الدين واغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير and now the one for 40 years of forgiveness. Allahumma rabba shahri ramadhan Alladhi anzalta fihi al-Qur'an Waftaratta ala ibadika fihi al-Siyam Salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Warizukni hajja baytika al-Haram Fi aami hadha wa fi kulli aam Waghfir li tilka al-Dhunub al-Idham Fa innahu la yaghfirha ghayruka Ya Rahman يا علام اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Well now we're gonna look at section fourteen of دعاء الافتتاح. And here it's all about the prophet. It's beautiful. And it's really important to know about him rather than just read it like a parrot. So here we say اللهم صل على محمد. Oh Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad. عبدك who is your slave who Submitted to you. What a sulika. He's your messenger. Now there are eight things we're saying about the Prophet. He's the slave. He's the messenger of Allah. Wa aminika. He's Allah's trustee. It's awesome. Wa safiyika. He's Allah's chosen one. Wa habibika. He's Allah's friend. Wa khiratika min khalkik. He's the best of creations. The most awesome man who walked the earth. Wa hafidi sirika. He keeps, he looks after the secrets of Allah. He conveys the message, he brings the message of Allah. 
when we recite this bit, we've got to think of the Prophet. So what comes to mind? So I've said this all over and over again. The moment you think of the Prophet, you think TTC. Can you say that for me? TTC. He was truthful, he was trustworthy, and he was compassionate. And if I want to be like him, Surah Al Imran, Ayah 31. In Kuntum Tahibun Allah Fattabi If you love Allah, Qul, Allah is saying, Oh Muhammad, tell them, if you love Allah, Fattabi follow me, that is, follow the Prophet. يُحْبِبْكُمُ Allah, Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He will forgive all your sins. So we have to follow him. The first thing, and it's not a choice. Truthfulness, trustworthiness, and compassion. That means kindness. Okay. So a little bit about his life, just so we it's in our heads. So you can divide his life into three bits. He was 63. Divided into 40, 13, 10. Can you remember that? 40, 13, 10. Add them together. 40 plus 13, 53. 53 plus 10, 63. 40 years is birth to Ba'that. That means for 40 years, he lived amongst his people and they were absolutely sure this is the most truthful, most compassionate and most trustworthy person. And it was at Ba'that that you have the first five ayat of Quran that are revealed. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. That's Ba'that. And when these are revealed on the 27th of Rajab, and slowly as he tells them, those 13 years in Makkah, oh my goodness, it was they, it was like changing things. They didn't like it. They called him a madman. They called him a poet. They called him a magician. All these things they called him because they didn't want to listen to him, although they knew he was trustworthy and truthful and compassionate. So those 13 years were in Makkah. They were difficult years. In the end, because they were persecuted, that means the Makkans were really mean, they had to leave. So he left when he was 53. So that 13 years is Ba'tha to Hijra. So when he's 53, at Hijra, he live, leaves for Medina. That's, that's called Hijra, the, the journey from Makkah to Medina. And those 10 years, the last 10 years, were in Medina, where he builds a city, where he lays down a code, or tells, you, tells us how to behave, and he was phenomenal. And the rest of the Quran is revealed over there. So if you can remember 40, 13, 10. And then just a little bit about him. Let me tell you a little bit about him. So let me tell you maybe five things. Okay, let's do five things that we can follow. He was always the first to do salam. Always. Um, he sat in a circle. He never sat at a prominent place so people would say, oh, in fact, when people just come to the mosque in Medina, they would say, no, Muhammad, where is Muhammad? Because he wouldn't make himself apparent like I'm the boss, so I'm going to sit somewhere special. No, 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 no. When he sat down with people to eat, he would always start first and finish last. So nobody felt awkward when they sat with him. When they went to battle, he was the bravest of them. Imam Ali says we used to hide behind him. And the fifth one. Ah, oh, he was so kind. You know, when in the, sometimes he would play with children in the streets. And when dads would come to pick up their kids, he would say no. Don't come just now. Let me go and take the orphans home. Don't love your children in front of them because they will get hurt. They're so kind. There's so many stories about him. But these five, at least you can remember, when we recite this bit of iftadah. So in your book, I'm hoping at that particular part, you will write TTC. And that's what you know about the Prophet. And you write 40, 13, 10. Okay, so let's write. Let's recite um, Dua al-Iftatah together. Are you ready? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Allahumma inni aftatihu thana bihamdik wa anta musaddidun lis-sawabi bimannik wa iqantu annaka anta arhamur rahimin fi mawzi al-afwi wal-rahma wa ashaddu al-mu'aqibin fi mawzi al-nakali wal-naqima وأعظم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعظمة اللهم عذنت لي في دعائك ومسعلتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي وعجب يا رحيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور أثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وأثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها 
الحمد لله الذي لم يتق الصاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكي ولا منازع له في أمري الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقي ولا شبيه له في عظمتي الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمر وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجد الباسط بالجود يد الذي لا تنكس خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العتا إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوحاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سحل يسير اللهم إنا عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وسفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على كبيه عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطي وعمدي أتمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وعريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فسرت أدعوك عامنا وأسألك مستعنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن ابتعني اعتبت بجحلي عليك ولعل الذي ابتعني هو خير لي لعلمك في عاقبة الأمور فلما رمولا كريما أسبر على عبد اللعيم منك علي يا ربي إنك تدعوني فهو ليانك وتتعببوا إلي فتبغضوا إليك وتتوددوا إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التتول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إليك والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياء فالك الأسباء تيان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على أفه بعد قدرتي والحمد لله على طول أناته في غضبي وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالك الأسباء ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له مناس يعادل ولا شبيه يشاقل ولا ظهير يعاذد كهر بإزته العزاء وتواضع لأدمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني هنا ونادي ويستر علي كل عورة وعنا عسي ويؤذم النعمة فالألي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة حمية قد أعتاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد أراني فأثني عليه حامدا واذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك هجاب ولا يغلق باب ولا يرد سائل ولا يخيب عامل الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستقبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الحاربين نكال الظالمين
صريخ المستسرقين موضي هاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البهار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويتعم ولا يتعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وعميمك وسفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد ان شاء الله we will continue with this tomorrow um, and we will look at the blessings that are sent on the prophet so can we have a salawat please اللهم صل على محمد وعال محمد وعجل فرجه so let's look at what i've got i had this awesome sermon or the poster, you know the Sermon of the Prophet? It was put in a poster by Zahra Chandu. It is probably one of the most awesome, most phenomenal posters I've ever seen. It, it was just, I can't describe it. It was just amazing. Hussein and Fatima sent me their um, the picture of their comfort corner, their salah corner in their home. And my friend Zenith, my goodness, she said, all these children keep on sending you pictures. So she sent me a picture of her watching this session and it made my soul grin. You know, not just smile, like really grin. Muhammad Abbas sent me a picture of his comfort corner, his salah corner. It is just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I don't have any words. Shalina from Scotland sent me her picture and her mom had made her musalla. So her mom had embroidered this beautiful musalla. She said it took her mom two years to make it. Amina, Shahista, both of, the, both of them sent me a picture of their comfort corner or their namaz corner in their room as they call it. And don't forget, Sumeya's videos are all uploaded onto the website on Q Fatima on the YouTube. Go on there and all the lessons that we're going to do on Surat Al-Ankabut, she's done lots of different videos that will help you understand it better. But it is Ayyam al -Bib. It is the 13th of Ramadan, right? So we've got, remember I told you, 13th, 14th and 15th of Ramadan are known as Ayyam al -Bib, the energized days, the lighted days. And we've got to reflect on Asma al -Husna. And Yesterday, I started off by talking about Dua al -Mujir, mujir if you remember. And Dua al mujir I said 18 and 8 times, it says, Ajirna minanariya mujir. Can you say that with me? Ajirna minanariya mujir. Basically, protect us, save us. Um, how shall I put it? Keep us safe from the fire. And we use the name Ya Mujir or the one who protects us, the one who gives us refuge. If you can't read the whole dua, at least that much. Now there's 176 different Asma'ul Husna. So let's just look at the first few so you know what the dua sounds like. It's so beautiful. If you go on YouTube, you will find lots of recitations. Abadar Halawaji has a most beautiful recitation, but there are lots of other reciters who do really well as well. So let's see how the dua starts. It says, Subhanaka Ya Allah. That's how it starts. You know what Subhan is? We talked about Subhan. Subhan was something that is perfectly balanced. When we say Subhan, we're saying we declare your perfection. So we're saying you are absolutely perfect, Ya Allah. Ta'alaita Ya Rahman. Now, Allah is high, really high. So you, O oh Rahman, are, oh my goodness, way up there. And then we say, Ajirna minan nari ya mujir. I'm going to read a couple of the verses, maybe three, so you get the gist of it. And maybe you can continue and recite it later, a bit at a time. You know, if there's 88 sections as such, divide it into three. What is three into 88? Do you know? I've got to do some math here. I don't use calculators. So what's 3 into 88? Can somebody tell me? Do you know how much does it come to? Anybody got any idea at 12? 
about 29 yeah okay so you could do 30 30 and then cut it down 60 and then 28 so divide it in there and you can do it over those three days so let's recite a little bit of it okay Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad Subhanaka ya Allah Ta'alayta ya Rahman Ajirna min an-nar ya Mujir Subhanaka ya Rahim Ta'alayta ya Kareem Ajirna min an-nar ya Mujir Subhanaka ya Malik Ta'alayta ya Malik and you could continue and look at all those names and think about them. At the end, right at the end, it ends with Ayatul Karima. Do you know what Ayatul Karima is? Oh, that's phenomenal. It's that which Prophet Yunus recited in the belly of the fish. Subhanaka inni kuntu So he says, glory be to you. I'm the one who's been unjust to myself. And then Allah answers by saying, lahu. We answered him. And we saved him from his sadness. And that's how we save those who believe in us. So when we ask this dua, Allah is answering and he's saying, I will respond to you. Remember I told you that this was a gift to Rasulullah given to him when he was praying at Maqam Ibrahim. And he was told, even if your sins are greater than the rain that falls, that the trees that lose their leaves, the leaves that fall in autumn, and the sand in the desert, my goodness, they're forgiven with this dua. Please don't forget it. 13, 14, 15. Today, tomorrow, and the day after, you recite dua al mujib Okay. So now we're going to go to our A to Z of Salah. And you're going to remind me if you remember all of them. A4, Adhan, B4, Book, C4, Connect, D4, Dua, E, what was E for? The essence, do you remember? Essence of Salah. And we talked about the 11 wajibat, the 10 fingers and a nose. And then we said 5 were rukn, which was the essence. Okay. F for forgiveness. G for gratitude or thanks. H for home. And that's what we we're going to do a corner in our home. I for intention. And yesterday we looked at jahar and we looked at jama'ah. And many of you told me that you'd never heard of Jahar before. So I got lots of messages. In fact, I got 32 messages about Jahar. And I thought, oh my goodness. So today we're going to look at K. Anybody guess what K is for? I'm going to give you a, a, a clue. It's a cube. The word cube comes from that word. You find it in Makkah. And when you're praying, it's really important because you have to face in that direction. What is it called? You're right. It's the Kaaba. Okay. So let's just talk a little bit about Kaaba. And to to face Kaaba is known as Qibla. Qibla means to orientate, to turn towards. So you have to face Qibla for all your wajib salah. Have to. It's a must. For your nawafil, that is the extra for mustahab, you don't have to. Because you know you can do your nafila walking around. So say, for example, I finish my maghrib. I can do my nawafil prayers walking around. I don't have to stand on musalla, although it is better to. Qibla is not necessary if you're doing your mustahab salah. But if you're on your musalla, yes, then you face it towards Qibla. You've got to face Qibla with everything. Your head, your eyes, your body, everything. You need to know where Qibla is. So... Sometimes you know by, I mean, these days it's quite easy. Our phones have all these apps in them and we can tell exactly where Qibla is. But say you didn't, then find out where the sun rises and where the sun sets. Where is east and where is west? And what direction is Makkah in? Come on, learn your directions, learn your compass. All these skills you learn, whether you were in, in school. And if you're not learn them, then learn them now. You've got some time to learn them. It is really important to know where Qibla is in every part of your house. It's really important. You know, when you're in your bathroom, you can't face Qibla or you can't have your back towards Qibla. So if, for example, you moved into a house where the bathroom or your toilet was exactly towards Qibla, you have to sit in an angle. You cannot give your back or front to Qibla. That's really important. When somebody dies, we put their feet towards Qibla. If you go to the graveyard, 
you will find that when people are buried, they are buried on their side, so their face faces Qibla. So it is mustahab. Now this is mustahab, not wajib. Those were wajib. Now, it is mustahab that when you sleep, you sleep on your right side facing Qibla. So when you're planning your homes and your bedrooms and you're decorating them, make sure you do that. It's really important. When you're studying or you're reading or Quran or Ziyara, face Qibla. It has an effect on you. It makes you learn better. If you're listening to a much list, face Qibla. If you're listening to it online, try and face Qibla. It makes such a difference. You know, in an Islamic court, the people who are sitting in front of the judge, they try to face Qibla. These are important things because there's a vibe that comes from the Kaaba that sometimes we don't understand. And the idea is that you focus totally on Allah with your body and your heart. You don't turn away at all. Now look what Imam Sadiq says in Salah. He says, when you face the Qibla in Salah, he says, empty your, your heart of whatever takes your attention away from Allah. Remember, you are standing before him and you are at the base, at the foot of fear and hope. It's so lovely, so lovely. So when you stand up for Qibla, you put your feet together towards Qibla. If you're a girl, if you're a boy, a little bit apart, but towards it, your hands down still, your head towards it. Don't look either way. It doesn't work like that. You look straight towards Qibla. And when you look, when in Salah, obviously you're looking down at your at your sajdaka. But Qibla is really important in all aspects of your house. So if I were you, I'd draw some Kaabas, lots of them, find the Qibla in every room in the house, and either stick it on the ceiling with an arrow or on the wall or somewhere, so everybody knows where the Qibla is in every single room in the house. So the Kaaba is really, really important. So it's a square. You know the English word cube comes from the Arabic word Kaaba. Do you know who built the Kaaba? Tell me. It was first built by Prophet Adam. He was the first person who built the Kaaba with the help of Jibreel. And then in the flood of Prophet Nu obviously got destroyed. And then Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail raised the Kaaba again in the exact spot that Prophet Adam built it. And it's got four corners. And those four corners, when you think about them, you think of Subhanallahi, Walhamdulillahi, Wala ilaha illallahu, Wallahu Akbar. It's covered with this covering called the Kiswa. That's right. You gotta learn about it. It's so awesome. Build it with Lego. We built one. I'll show you one tomorrow, inshallah. Built it with Lego. Look at it. Make one out of a tissue box or a box. And know each part of it. You know the little, you have the little stone at the side. Do you know what it's called? Hajral Aswad. You know that? It used to be white. It used to be in heaven. It used to be in Jannah. Prophet Adam used to do sajda on it before he came down on the earth. There's so much history there. One of the walls has a crack in it. Did you know that? Even when they try to repair it, it doesn't work. Because that was the crack with which Imam Ali's mom entered the Kaaba. And when she entered there, he was the only person who was born in the Kaaba. So when you do lay your musalla out towards Qibla, or you do sit down, sit down a little bit earlier than when you start Salah, and start thinking about all the things about the Kaaba, phenomenal things. And what effect it has on you when you're facing it. Okay, so now we're going to look at the preparation for Laylatul Qadr. And yesterday I told you we need to have a mission statement. In my book, my Laylatul Qadr book, yesterday I showed you my piece of paper from years ago where I had the six boxes, which was my vision board. Now I put that vision board into a statement about who am I? Can you see that? So I am a Khoja. I'm a Shia Ithna Ashari. That's why I've got 12 there and I've got a K there. I'm a Muslim. I'm a mom of five kids and lots of non womb kids. These are my own children and those are my non womb children. Oh, five awesome grandchildren who loves the Quran, who loves the Masumi, especially Imam Hussein. Okay, I have another little box here. And in that box, I write lots of things, blueberries, green tea, whatever you like. So first, you've got to find out, if someone asked you, who are you? What would you say? What would you say straight away? So I would say, I'm a Koja Shia, Ithna, Ashari, Muslim mom and grandma who loves the Quran, who loves the Masumi. And I absolutely am in love with Imam Hussein. That's what I would say. 
Now I gotta find out a goal. But this identity, I gotta make sure I know. Do you know who a Koja is? Where do they come from? Do you know your history? Do you know what Shia Ithna Ashari is? Shia follower of Imam Ali Ithna Ashari, 12, a follower of the 12. Muslim, who is a Muslim? How do you define a Muslim? A mom, my goodness, I could define that. A grandma, what are my responsibilities? Quran, do I know it? M14, I call it M14, the Masumin 14. Oh, and Husseini, what does it mean to be Husseini? And yesterday I told you that the goal was to try my best at absolutely every aspect of my life. So we now need a goal. This was my goal, but let's talk about a goal. So in Quran, in Surah to Baqarah, Allah, I think it's Ayah 148, Allah says, huwa Every single existence has a goal. So we've got to look for the best of goals. So I told you what my mission statement would be, which is basically my goal, that when death comes, I would say thank you for life. I did my best in every aspect of my life to leave the world a better place than what I found it in. Okay. So if you found a goal, then it's quite simple. You only have to go towards it, whether you run towards it or you walk towards it, but whatever you do, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you're going towards it. So before the 23rd, before the Laylatul Qadr, what do you need to do? Number one, get to know who you really are, what you really want. Verbalize it. That means put it into words and keep on talking to Allah. On your musalla, keep on telling him, this is what I am. This is what I want. Now, it might change. That's okay. As you grow older, it might change. It's okay. But start somewhere. Ask for forgiveness. Until you're completely forgived out. You've thought of all the people you've done wrong to. Ask for forgiveness. Thirdly, find a mujibu da'wat. You know what that is? Someone who cares enough for you to pray for you. Someone who can tell your secrets to. It's really important to find somebody. Because when they pray, they pray for you with a sinless tongue. Number four, oh, make friends with the Quran. Your whole life, pepper it with the Quran. Little, little bits, learn it. We will do small, small ayat that, inshallah, you will be able to understand and you will be able to write with you. Inshallah, we'll look at each one of those. Make an effort by the 23rd of Ramadan to know at least a little bit about all the 14 Masumin. Because we're going to put that Quran on our heads. And we're going to recite the names of the Masumin. Bi Ya Allah, Bi Muhammadin, Bi Aliyin, Bi Fatima. Today we did the Prophet. Inshallah, we will look at all of them. Number five, always reach for the stars. Don't keep your ambitions low. Always want the best for yourself. And number six, always remember each other more so. Remember those who are in difficulty, who are oppressed, who are so desperate for relief. Make them first in your life. And you will be taken care of. So these are the six things that we need to do before Laylatul Qadr. And we'll go into some of them, inshallah, over the next few days. But I'd like to go now to Surah Al-Ankabut. Okay. Now we looked at section one. And you remember section one, we looked at the whole thing. And we talked about walking or walking the talk. We're not just saying it, we're going to be tested. We talked about accountability, about parents, about um, jihad. And we talked about... Nobody will bear the burden of another. Now, we just finished yesterday the second section, which is Ayah 14 to 40, and we looked at the test that the prophets had to go through. And to understand this section, let's fast forward to 2020 and look at the lessons we learned. From Prophet Nu, we see that he constantly tried hard. 950 years. We gave up in two minutes, five minutes, in two or three, three days. We've just given up. While he tried for 950 years. From Prophet Ibrahim, we saw that he, he asked his people to stop making idols, basically. But they said their economy depended on it. They weren't willing to go for the right thing. And his, their reaction was kill him and burn him because they didn't want to know. From Prophet Lut, we saw that they were highway robbers. And they behaved really badly with young people. So we see what they did just so that they felt good. Prophet Shu'ayb, we saw, had to live with a people or talk to a people who really overcharged for everything. They cheated people. They were mutafifins. Then we saw the people of Ad and Thamud. I mean, they thought there was nobody like them because they were strong and because they had these exceptional, intelligent construction abilities. 
Then obviously we saw Prophet Musa, Fir'aun, Haman, Haman, and Harun. Fir'aun obviously wished to be worshipped and obeyed. I mean, he had serious control issues. He wanted to bully everyone. Karun thought, because he had so much money, and he thought, I did this, nothing was going to happen to him. And you know what happened to him, right? And Haman thought, his intelligence and his cleverness, he could be devious, and he could bully people with that. So these are lessons we learned from there. Now today, we're going to look at what this surah actually is named after. The Ankabut, the spider. So first of all, you're going to recite with me the three ayat. The, in fact, the four ayat, 41, 42, 43, and 44, which comprise of section 3. So can you recite them with me, please? Let's do this. Ah, I forgot. What did I forget? Tell me. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Mathalu alladheena attakhadhu min duni allahi awliyaaka mathalil anqabut. Ittakhadat bayta. وَإِنَّ أَوْهَنَ الْبُيُوتِ لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ The parable, the example of those who take guardians besides Allah is like the example of the spider that makes it for itself a house. And most surely, the weakest of the houses is the spider's house, if only they knew. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Surely Allah knows whatever you call upon besides Him. And He is the mighty and the wise. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَذْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ And we give these examples, we give them to human beings, but none understand them except those who have knowledge. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعَيَاتِ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah created the heavens and the earth with truth. Most surely there is a sign in this for those who believe. So now let's think about the spider's web. Let's talk about it a little bit, okay, so we understand it. The strength of the fibers, you know those tiny little things, is stronger than steel. And yet, these are thinner than your hair. Can you imagine how strong they are? And they have to support themselves with walls or trees or branches or pillars. They can't support themselves. The spider is the only one who spins its web out of its own secretion. So it has a gland in it, a silk gland. It doesn't use like birds use nests. They will have sprigs or you know sticks or moss or something like that. Ants will use the earth to make their antils, but the spider uses its own product. It's from its own body. It sits in the middle of the web, sometimes on its own, and it thinks and it waits for all the little insects that it catches to get stuck in it. Now let's see what new research says. So there's some new research which says that the spider is connected to its web. I mean, its web, it's like an external drive. It's, a, it's a, another part of its thinking for it. So the spider thinks through its web, like we rely on computers or phones or making notes or something like that. But a spider's thinking is interwoven with his web. So I was reading about this and it says that the spider will know by the, by the vibration in the web as to what's been caught. Whether it's an insect or it's a leaf or it's just some sand or it's just the wind. But what's really surprising is that they think through problems through their web. It's constantly tugging at, the, at, at those little strings of it, if I call it strings, it's, its little secretions. It keeps on tugging at those little things, you know, and it's loosening and tightening the strands and it's looking at it in subtle ways. So the researcher is called Hilton Japiasu. And he writes in both the scientific journal and in the quantum magazine. And he says that the spider tenses the thread as though she's filtering information through her brain. It's like it's all interconnected. Now Allah is telling me and you as well that if you think like that, that you rely on other people or other things or what you have, and you think that is my God, that is what I'm going to rely on, that is what I'm going to worship then it can be brushed away in one go, just like the spider. It will just go away. It's gone. And I thought I'd created all these big things in my head. 
And it's really important to understand what's happening now. So we thought we were really clever as human beings. We were so intelligent. We've got technology at its, at its peak. We thought life would never change. We would just build and build and build. We never thought of anything. And then suddenly came a virus that we couldn't even see. We can't even see it. We don't even know what it does to us. And we're all at home, locked down. One little virus. It brushed away everything that I thought was my ecosystem. That was my world. And that's exactly what this is trying to teach me. And it's really important to think about the spider and think about his web, how he or she, he, I'll call it she because it refers to she, how she thinks it's the greatest thing in its world. That's all it has. That's its world. How it's going to catch people, how it's going to find its food in it. That's its whole world. And it's so strong, yet it's so weak. And our world is like that. It's so strong, yet it's so, so weak. Every time you think of the spider's web, think of it. I was reading something else about the spider as well. And I think maybe you could look at it. There's a book called Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web was written by Evan White. And it talks about a pig. And it talks about Charlotte, who's a spider. And how the pig was going to be taken to be killed. Wilbur, I think is the pig's name, was going to be taken to be killed. And how Charlotte weaves messages in her web to be able to save Wilbur. It's a fictional story, but you've got to read it to understand it. I mean, Spider-Man, who doesn't know Spider-Man and his artificial web and his strength with his web? You've seen it, haven't you? And then the World Wide Web. We all know WWW. It stands for World Wide Web. And it's called a web because it's tangled and interlinked all through that structure, all there. So think about all these things and think how fragile our world is, how weak our world is. If we do not include Allah in it. And we will see in the next section of Surah Al-Ankabut, which was one ayah, Surah number 45, how we can strengthen this. And how, it doesn't say don't have homes. It doesn't say don't rely on your external life. But how will I make it strong enough so I don't collapse if that collapses? Okay. So inshallah we will continue with this and look at section 4 tomorrow. Oh, that's a beautiful ayah, absolutely beautiful. Inshallah, you will recite it earlier. So before we, before you meet me tomorrow at this time, if you recite ayah 45, then we will ponder over it. Okay, so to end today, um, let us recite Surah Al-Fatiha for all the marhumin, especially those of your family. We think about those who are ill and think about those who are in trouble. These are not easy times. They're really, really difficult times for everyone. We will recite the dua for protection. And inshallah, the ziyarah of Imam Hussain. Are you ready to recite with me? Okay, go on. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanir rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Close your eyes, look down, ask Allah to give the thawab to all the marhumin, especially those of your family. Pray for those who are ill and pray for those who are in real trouble. لي خمسة أطفي بها هر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاطمة لي خمسة أطفي بها هر الوباء الحاتمة المستفى والمرتضى وأبناهما والفاطمة السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين 
وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد جزاكم الله خير I see you tomorrow at the same time inshallah um, في امان الله كريم but don't forget these are ayam will be there awesome 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 days and nights don't forget to al mujir if you can't read to al mujir at least ajirna min al nariya mujir and ponder over the asma al husna just three days three nights really really amazing three days and three nights and also pray to allah to make us all ahlul quran rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim